Hello and welcome back to another Omni Heroes video. Uh, in this video, we're just going to go through Aphrodite, uh, the new um, unit. So let's go ahead and just have a look at her talents. First of all, I've already been through these in a previous video, um, uh, but let's jump, jump into a deep dive. Um, just to say, I love the artwork. It's very nice. Um, you know, very much enjoying it. So let's go ahead and have a look at her talents. So as you can see, I have got another copy of her uh, waiting to go. But what I want to do first is see how she is at six stars and whether or not she's worth 60,000 diamonds. I personally think you should be saving for Cleo um, for the season. You should probably skip on uh, these units. If, you, if you're only summoning once um, on 03 call this season, then I would say you need to skip and you need to get Cleo up to eight stars. Once you've got Cleo up to eight stars, you can just forget about them. Um, she'll work perfectly in all of the uh, the different synergies you've got. Um, she will have her Monarch buff, and she will also have that 50% buff uh, increase. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I would I would probably suggest for this season get Cleo up to uh, eight stars. And if you've got her up to eight stars, uh, then we'll see what the other units are like as well. Um, I have. I'll. I'll Bear with me. Sorry, I was taking a sip of the coffee. It is required. Um, so, uh, with this unit, I've actually already recorded this video once, uh, but unfortunately I didn't have enough space, so uh, my bad. But, uh, with regards to Aphrodite, um, the uh, deals 405% magic damage to backlight enemies. Uh, when activated, she removes all debuffs from all allies. Um, very effective tool. Uh, and for every one stack of debuff removed, her attack increases by 10% up to 100 stacks. So she can get up to a 1000% attack increase for every debuff removed uh, when she deals her ultimate. It's very important because we'll get into it. Um, Aphrodite deals up to 162 magic damage. And then every time a unit dies on the battlefield, Aphrodite will use her ultimate. This will trigger um, the... Uh, the debuffing for uh, ally units uh, and hopefully get up to that thousand percent very quickly as long as you fight in uh, you know like a mystifiers team or a, um, an attack down team like the glorians potentially now we don't have this one um, so she won't be stealing any units or any enemy units um, until we get her up to seven stars but we'll do that in the the next video so let's get into some gameplay for her this is the team that i went with uh, at the end of my recording session for a first time round um this is uh is, this is going to be a sick team um the reason for that i didn't mention before um but she is a monarch so if you can get her up to eight stars um then she'll be uh monarch and she'll have that very powerful synergy with Mavis, which means they won't die um, nearly as much. So let's have, uh, let's jump in. Uh, let's just see how well this team performs. Uh, this is probably going to be quite a, a long fight. But you now also have the option to, instead of, say, uh, having Nerissa on this Phantoms team, if you have Cleo up to eight stars, um, you can build a three Monarch team, um, potentially four with Albert. Um, I mentioned that in in my last video. You're gonna need to get used to seeing this animation a lot, just as much as you see Nerissa's. Um, she does actually. Uh, so in the testing that I've done, um, she does actually do more damage than Nerissa, especially uh, when she performs this ultimate. She removes all of those debuffs. She's getting attack stacking, um, so she's only building up and up and up. I've seen her get to quite high numbers. Like Janet at the moment is outputting more damage than her, um, but I think eventually um, that uh, Aphrodite can output more damage than Janna. I believe it's a bold claim, I know, um, but we just need to see our units uh, die effectively or the enemy units die as well. Uh, so as you can see, Nerissa down here. So this will be a, a further increase, uh, and then both of them down here. But we do get them back right away, with thanks to Althea. We don't get Jana, uh, Nerissa back, unfortunately, uh, but it is what it is. So Janna here is starting to do massive amounts of damage because of the number of units that have died on the battlefield. Um, and we'll start to see more and more ultimates happen as well. So a very powerful effect, that. Um, and they've learned their lesson 
this time. So Nerissa, she just she just tickled them. You know, she didn't do very much damage at all. Um, whereas uh, Aphrodite, she seems to be so she's up to like I said, she's up to 190 million at the moment, and we've still got to see uh, Mavis die sort of three times as well. So let's go ahead and see. Yeah, so Janna. Janna is a special case, I think. Uh, but Aphrodite doing second most. So let's try this again. Try the same team setup and let's compare Nerissa's damage uh, to Aphrodite's damage as well. And it, if we had the Monarch um, synergy, it would make it much more effective. So it's, it's Phantoms and Monarchs for... Um, Phantoms and Monarchs for your Avengers team. So as you can see, we do very, very little damage to start with, but we do get the max HP increase, and we also get these two ultimates off now. Um, so in PvP, I think this is going to be a very, very powerful unit. Um, really do, because of the, the death trigger here. So it's whenever a unit dies, uh, we do get that. Yeah, yeah, we're going to need to get used to seeing that quite a bit. So the difference between the two, um, Nerissa is doing um, damage to all enemies, whereas uh, Aphrodite is only doing damage to backline enemies. So just something to keep in mind. If you've got troublesome backline, um, say, for example, against uh, Elma, and there's Mavis down, uh, and we, we come back right away, so we'll keep that. Uh, but as you can see, building up Janna here as well. Janna really is powerhouse. Really is the powerhouse. Um, but again, Aphrodite, she's starting to put work in. She put, she's done more damage than uh, Nerissa. Maybe they were just a bit... I think they were just a bit timid with Nerissa. I think they could have done something similar um, with her as well. Uh, the same as they've done with Aphrodite. I think they've learned from from Nerissa, and I think they have implemented uh, the lessons that they've learned into Aphrodite. So as you can see, doing massive amounts of damage now, uh, much higher than Nerissa is, um, and she's, she's outputting way more damage. You know, it is what it is, but let's see how much Janna's doing. Yeah, so Janna is just clean sweep, but we'll see how much... So that's five... Um, so that'll be 10 attacks in total from both Nerissa and Aphrodite. Fortunately, they've, <laughs> they've learned not to play out Aphrodite's and Nerissa's uh, after everybody else is dead. But again, um, very powerful uh, unit within this team. So let's try a different team setup that I had before without Janna. Um, now it was Mavis, it was Albert. So Albert here... Um, Poor Albert, forgotten, thrown to the wayside, but he is a monarch, which is um, very important. So if we did have Aphrodite up to that eight star, we would have a um, a three monarch team here, which would be very good for Sal, um, for him to, to be able to build up. So very similar to Janna. Um, the only issue that I have with this particular team uh, is we don't have any summons. So we don't have any... Um, any units that uh, any unit that brings in an additional character into this slot down here into the sixth slot, um, it can be a bit troublesome um, because you won't get that proc anywhere near as much as you would in the other team. I think the other team is most definitely um, yeah. I think the other team is most definitely uh, a better fit for her, uh, but again ooh, straight down um again if we had monarch that would not happen so getting her up to eight stars um i think might be the priority uh, i think it's going to be really important for her uh to get up to that eight stars uh, so she does share that monarch link and you can run this team effectively as a um yeah, so you can run this team effectively as a um, a building world arena, 
uh, or in foggy Coliseum. I think this will be a, a good one to good one to run, especially if you could squeeze a fourth monarch in there. The only the only person that I think you could squeeze a fourth monarch in there with is Cleo, but I think Cleo would be uh, an excellent fit onto this team. I think given the additional shielding and damage uh, reduction, if you would have her runes, um, would be a fantastic ability. So she's up to 322 million, which is actually very respectable. So as you can see, she'll trigger off uh, Sal now. So we'll get the uh, further attacks, and then we'll get Albert here, and then we'll combo off again. Yeah, no miss that time. So as you can see, very similar effect to um, Nerissa. There we go, perfect. So very, um, very powerful effects indeed. Uh, I think the fact that she performs her ultimate when units die is going to be a big selling point. Um, I wouldn't get too fooled though, because she's going to be a glass cannon until she gets up to that eight star mark. Uh, she will go down very easily. I guess that's what you want in the Avengers team, but if you, you don't want it to go down again and again and again, then best to get her up to that uh, that eight-star mark. I'm going to leave her at uh, seven stars because we do get um, copies of her. So if we go into Hall of Heroes, on the rebate... Oh, no, that's the Queen. Where have you gone? Let me just have a look at the event schedule. One sec. Don't know if you can see this or not. Um, okay, so we can get her from the shop. Can't believe it. Won't even use that at full power. Extra 3,000 3, health and 400 attack would have gone a very long way. Uh, right, okay. So, um, you can pick her up from the shop. So, she's going to be just like uh, Astrid. Uh, it's going to be just like... Um, Leandra, you'll be able to pick up her shards from the shop uh, throughout the course of the season. So I'm going to leave her at um, I'm going to leave her at seven stars via the oath recall, um, and I will. I'm two off. Just give me two. Just give me two. Just give me two. Um, but you can pick her up from here. Uh, I would suggest uh, picking up if you are if you are going to summon on this particular banner. I would suggest if you can get her up to seven stars, uh, get her up to seven stars using the ticket. If you are lucky enough like me to pull two copies from the summons itself, um, then I would suggest leaving her at seven stars because you will get an additional copy um, in five weeks' time. And instead, potentially going for another copy of Dahlia or getting the other units up uh, that you've got. Like, for example, if I go into uh, Mystifies here, I've already got Mulan at 3, um, and I've already got Dahlia at 3, um, and my Wukong's already at 4, uh, sorry, 4 stars here, or 9 stars, and 8 stars respectively. Um, so potentially going for another unit um, in here, it just depends on what your box looks like. So uh, yeah, I think she, is she worth, the, is, is she worth the, the summons? Yes, I think she's going to be part of um, the Avengers team, which in current meta is one of the most powerful um teams that you can run especially with the previous season synergy i've not looked at any of the new seasonal stuff yet so we'll uh, we'll get into that in a little bit but just want to say um thank you very much for watching i am nearly at um 500 subscribers and the goal is to get to a thousand so if you are watching and you're not subscribed uh, please do click down below be really really um i'd be really thankful for it uh, you know, I really appreciate it if you do click subscribe. Uh, I know that 70% of you who watch are not, so please do. Uh, and just thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.